Dominica embarks on a biodiversity project which could attract $1.7 million in investment from the Global Environment Facility and the Dominica Hotel and Tourism Association calls for greater investment in Dominica's destination marketing efforts. Our governors in the Channel 5 News will have details after this. Looking for the best deals on household and electronic items? Then shop and save at the Muslim store. Prices slashed. Television. At the Muslim store. Prices slashed. Washers. It's the Muslim style. Prices slashed. Laptops. At the Muslim store. Prices slashed. Jewelry. It's the Muslim style. Visit us on the Bayfront today. The Muslim store. Locally born, locally grown. Shopping is a lot easier with Courts Ready Finance. Choose what you want from our wide range of quality products and we take care of the rest. Courts Ready Finance's affordability means there's no deposit. There's no need for a lump sum of cash. It's flexible, which means you choose your payment term and you're guaranteed the lowest monthly payments anywhere. Best of all, it's easy. Easy to get and easy to pay. Shop at Courts today and get what you want hassle-free. Courts Ready Finance. Easy, affordable, flexible. Have you paid your mapping bill? The 10th of the month is disconnection. Upon disconnection, visit Mappin's main office. You will be required to pay off your balance and the reconnection fee. Reconnections will be done within 72 hours. So, avoid getting disconnected. Pay your mapping bill on time. Because life is better with mapping. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. First up in the news, the United Nations Development Program has launched an intended biodiversity project for Dominica. On Tuesday, the United Nations Development Program met with local stakeholders to develop an ideal project to protect areas like the Montuapito National Park. Dominica stands to benefit from 1.7 million U.S. dollars from the Global Environment Fund if the project proposal meets Jeff's expectations. Um, Dominica is a nature isle. You have lovely, I mean, each time I come to Dominica, I'm just blown away by the, the vegetation and how rich it is. And you have a number of protected areas. And this biodiversity project is to help strengthen and put systems in place to protect the protected areas, put a buffer zone around those protected areas and, and decide or make recommendations what activities can happen so it doesn't impact upon the protected areas and also look at institutional capacity and making sure the, these parks are sustainable so that in the future government has to put very little resources into them. Representatives from Ministry of Tourism, Dowasco and the Forestry Division were among participants of the workshop. The team leader on this consultancy is Dr. Reynold Murray from St. Vincent and he'll be overall responsible for pulling all the bits and pieces together. Then we have a Miss Bonnie Rusk, who is a um, protected area specialist. So she'll be looking at what is the best way to protect your area. And then we have a Miss Efrat Yovel, who is a financial expert. So she'll be looking at the financial sustainability of the park system, what makes sense, what doesn't make sense. So between the three of them, they will put together something which we hope the government of Dominica approves, so then we can submit that to the to access the $1.7 million that has been set aside on this project. The consulting team will be doing its field work over the next two months as they put the project together. 
And if they're able to do work at Mont Rapitan in terms of its sustainability, the project is actually one, one of the, the concepts in the project is that of sustainability, making the resource sustainable so that you don't just go and benefit from it today and tomorrow it's not there. Or you don't just take a large amount of visitors, you know you have many cruise ships and they want to go to a particular site. You don't just go to this one site and then after a while because of the weight of the pressure of people and that site becomes ruined and degraded and nobody wants to go back there and the tourist disappears and the country has nothing to hold on to. We are trying to help the country to identify its resources, the threats, how you can sustainably manage it and how you can garner your resources and use it effectively. In more news, President of the Dominica Hotel and Tourism Association says the public and private sector must have shared vision for the industry if its challenges are to be successfully addressed. Gregor Nassif says the government and private sector must work toward the same goals. The DHTA boss says Dominica's destination marketing budget investment is much lower than it actually should be. He says the tourism master plan calls for a marketing spend of approximately $12 million per year, but only $4 million is currently being spent on average. Nassif says incentives, taxation and fiscal, the fiscal framework must be competitive to attract investors to Dominica, who in turn will increase the number of rooms and improve the product. He believes visitor experience is critical. We have the issues of, uh, of crime, vagrancy, we have um, the, the arrival experience at the, at the ferry, um, which you know, it takes a very long time for, person to clear, for persons to clear immigration and, uh, and so on. You're watching Channel 5 News. The former president is proposing the establishment of a national productivity institute to monitor work output within the Dominican economy. His Excellency Elud Williams made the recommendations at the Public Service Awards ceremony. So as we approach the start of another triennium, it is probably an excellent opportunity to examine the feasibility of a national productivity institute which would be comprised of government, the private sector, civil society representatives through a legislative instrument and comprised of persons with specific skills and competencies. These skills and competencies would form the basis and criteria for appointment to the board of that institute and enshrined in legislation with the requisite budgetary support. The former president says the Productivity Institute would be required to promote and measure increases in productivity in Dominica. On to news from the court, the trial dates have been set for 14 out of 24 cases on the High Court cause list. Making an appearance were Herbert Xavier, Loretta Xavier and Manuela Williams, who were convicted of the murder of their brother Harrison Williams. That matter is being retried, but the date of their new trial has not been decided. Kenrick Tyson and David Senja, also convicted of murder, will also have their trial dates announced later in the session. Vivian Charles, also convicted of murder, has had his trial date set for March 16, 2015. Eleven cases of sexual misconduct, including unlawful sexual intercourse, indecent assault, incest, gross indecency and buggery were called, all with trial dates set before the 3rd of March this year. Other cases with trial dates set for the following weeks, including causing wounding with intent, causing grievous bodily harm, burglary and theft, and unlawful and malicious wounding. Meantime, at the criminal assizes, one female prosecutor claimed to have been threatened by one of the accused, Stephen Trevor James, otherwise known as Kurt Shaba James, who has denied the charge. In more news, corporate citizens Lime and Asta fans have collaborated with Crime Stoppers Dominica to make youth involvement in a Crime Stoppers school contest more appealing. During a media launch of the contest on Tuesday, representatives of both companies presented samples of the prizes which will be awarded to winners. Lime's general manager believes Crime Stoppers can be a powerful antidote against crime, which is bad for business. Uh, when you look at the total complement of the police force, I, 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 I know for a fact it's a number that totals below 1,000. And uh, uh, less than 500 actually, so, so certainly it means that you cannot have a police officer in every corner within Dominica, and so it leaves the rest for us as citizens to do and to, to report crime when it happens so that the perpetrators can be brought to justice, I think is something every Dominican would want to own as a personal obligation. 
and to, 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 to spill the beans, if you will, when there is any notion that crime is gonna, a crime is going to take place. We believe that security doesn't come solely through construction of police stations, uh, acquiring vehicles. It's also a people, a people matter. People have to be involved so that they can feel secure. And that's why crime, crime supposed to us is such a great idea. And um, therefore, being here today also um, is, is for the support for Crime Suppers as an initiative, and of course, a very bold way of saying we, 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 we embrace the, the effort uh, to reach out to the schools, to the young persons, so that they too could get on board in playing a role in making Dominica uh, uh, more secure. Crime Stoppers started here in 2012. Since May 2013, over a thousand calls have been made, providing 80 valid tips and leading to 15 arrests. 64 schools have so far been invited to participate in the contest. Students from primary and secondary schools will compete through poetry, art, jingles and essays. You can visit crimestoppersdominica.org for more information about the contest. The cutoff date for receipt of submissions is February 13. Meantime, organizers say it's important to make Crime Stoppers Dominica a household name. And in most uh, of the countries where where um, Crime Stoppers has started, it has been a reactive, a reactive initiative to a very serious increase um, in um, crime. I think what is uh, very um, interesting and important. Uh, is that we are taking a proactive initiative. To report a crime, you can call 1-800-TIPS, 1-800-8477. The call is free and there is no caller ID. If your tip leads to an arrest, you will receive a reward. This is Channel 5 News coming up. A quick action brings a fire at the National Credit Union under control. Your taste, your look, as individual as you are. Find the furniture piece that's right for you, only at Quartz. Choose from our wide selection of fresh new designs, luxurious comfort, and contemporary elegance. Best of all, it's more affordable than you think. So create the room that's all about you. Come into Quartz today where furniture is fashionable. Quartz, bringing value home. Strong preparation. Strong concentration. Strong teamwork. Strong nerve. Strong performance. Strong oil. Volkswagen recommends Castrol Edge, our strongest oil. Castrol, it's more than just oil, it's liquid engineering. Welcome back and the Public Service Union has written to the Minister for Labour over the dismissal of an employee of the Dominica Air and Seaport Authority. Airport Security Officer Vescott Jones was fired last year after he allowed UWP political leader Lennox Linton to remove crab backs from the airport security screening area at Douglas Charles Airport. Jones prevented the political leader from travelling with the crab backs for which a permit is required. The DPSU's Thomas Leitin told Channel 5 News this week the PSU is not satisfied with Jones's dismissal and is requesting that the matter go before a tribunal. A group of Marigot residents have accused the head of the Dominica Air and Seaport Authority of victimization. There was also a petition online demanding the reinstatement of Escort Jones to his former post of security officer without any loss of pay and with appropriate compensation for the suffering and pain he has endured as a result of his wrongful termination. The UWP leader delivered a petition to that effect to the office of the DASPA CEO on Monday morning. In more news, the focus of development projects in the Lapling constituency are expected to shift to education in this new term. 
The parliamentary representative says with a lot of the infrastructural projects accomplished in the last term, it's time to place emphasis on the educational development of the people of La Plaine, Buitica and Delis. Sejan says it's time to put politics aside and focus on governance. The parliamentary representative says there are plans for sporting facilities in Delis and Buitica. He also spoke of plans to work with farmers' groups and cooperatives to revive agriculture and establish a link with tourism. He believes linking agriculture and ecotourism could bring unprecedented development to his constituency and by extension the entire East. He intends establishing a public works office in La Plaine for ongoing maintenance of roads and other infrastructural development. And staff at the National Cooperative Credit Union had to be evacuated as a precaution on Tuesday because of a small fire. The exact cause of the fire is still unknown, but one construction worker on the site says one of the materials used in the new section may have contributed to the fire. Tuesday's morning's fire started at 11.30. Chief Executive Officer of the NCCU, Ima Irish, says the priority was to ensure the safety of persons in the building. One female staff stated that the building had to be inspected to ensure it's safe before returning inside. Channel 5 News will have more details as it's made available. And finally, the venues for the Calypso quarterfinals will be moved to the forecourt of the Windsor Park Stadium for the first time. This is actually the first time that a national Calypso competition will take place at that venue. The quarterfinal is usually held on the Newtown Savannah. On Tuesday, the 32 Calypsonians for this Saturday's quarterfinals, during a random dip at the Calypso House, found out the order in which they will perform. We are organizing four quarterfinals, um, which is on Saturday the 17th. And after that, in two weeks' time, we're going to have the semifinals. And two weeks after that, we're going to have the finals, which is on Valentine's night. Um, we're putting everything in place in terms of venue, um, having the, the, the artists rehearse and everything to, be, to give the people a proper show on, on the same thing. We're going to have 32 people singing on Saturday, um, 12 from the eliminations and 20 who are at quarterfinals level, quarterfinals and semis of last year. St. Rose says there are several changes the executive of Calypso Association would like to see to improve the competitions. You know, we want to do more, um, even in terms of um, broadening the, 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 the pool of the judges. We want to have more judges on board and so on. So because you have older people leaving the, 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 the business, so we want to have new persons on board. The prize money, I've often been hearing about the prize money um, may not be sufficient. Um, Calypsonians would like to see an increase in that. What do you think about that? Yeah, me too would like to see an increase, but it's if you can give it at this time, you know. Um, and as a competitor, <laughs> you know, I, I know what it's like, you know, to be in there. And, and because if you compare to the other Caribbean islands, you see, they get much more money than us. And I, I still believe that our product is still better than theirs. But then you have to check the economy and all that. And then you don't want to go and offer Calypso and $50,000. At the end of the day, you can't pay your bills. Despite that, St. Rose says the grand final night of the show has been profitable. Every year, we, we at least, thank God, we, we cover our bills. We get our bills paid. There are a few years where we fall below what we were expecting to make. You know, and then we were in debts and so on. But Calypso, as I said, sometimes when you have a rough year, it, it impacts on, on, on the get receipts, you know. But um, we've been doing pretty okay. We can do much better than that, you know, if we get, as you say, sponsorships. Um, and, you, you know, every year, we, we, we is the same amount of people that normally come to the shows, you know. So we're trying to do different things to attract more people to come to the shows so we can make more money, more money to pay the artists even more. That's news coming up next in sports. Expectations are high as the Windward Islands begin their Super 50 over campaign. This and more in sports next. A weekly sports magazine featuring fresh, exciting and stimulating interviews on local and regional sporting events. Gavin Richards keeps his eyes on sports live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Repeat Sundays 12 noon on Marfin's Channel 5. Bowl of some um, cricket news where the West Indies manager Sir Richie Richardson is hoping the team can end their T20 series on a high note. The West Indies will enter Wednesday's final game with an unbeatable 2-0 series lead against South Africa. 
Richardson says it is important that the team does not become complacent and looks to try to win the match to ensure a series sweep. Well, it's not often that um, you know a team that's ranked below a top team, you know, whitewash them. So that that's the focus of the team at the moment. You know, we're not going to relax. We've won the series, yes, and we're happy and we've celebrated. But you know, we were saving the celebration for for after the, the next match. And um, I've always said it's never over until it's over. Um, I don't believe in celebrating too early. Um, our goal right now is to win the series 3-0 and accumulate some points and, and go up in the rankings. And um, that's the mood of, in the camp. And, um, you know, we're just looking forward to the next match and we're going to dig deep and hopefully we can have an, another very successful match. The match will ball off at midday on Wednesday. The West Indies are unlikely to make any changes to their team. While South Africa will be resting their captain, Faf Duplessis. Meantime, the chairman of selectors, Clive Lloyd, has defended the non selection of Dwayne Bravo and Keron Pollard to the West Indies World Cup side, insisting that the pair's omission was not victimization and that the time was right to try something different. The former West Indies captain also noted it is not the end of the road for the Trinidad and Tobago pair who he encouraged to earn their way back into the West Indies team. He said there were two days of discussions between the selectors and the West Indies ODI captain, and he described the decision to leave out Bravo and Pollard as a difficult one, but a necessary one. He says it is not a situation where these guys have been wiped away. They have a chance at playing for the West Indies team again. He however thinks that the team is balanced and called on the troops to rally around the new captain Jason Holder. Well, it's a mixture of, of seasoned players and, and young players. It's quite obvious that, um, you know, we if they, if they play to their ability, I'm sure we can we can do well. Um, the, the other team, they have quite a few good teams in the competition. But I think if we can just show what talent we have out there, I'm sure that we could be, you know, a, a team challenge, challenging for that trophy. It's one day. It's a one-day competition, and I'm positive that we, if we play well, we can we can give a good account of ourselves. And a new young captain to lead the troop. Um, he's a young guy, and I hope, and he, I think he's somebody who will get support uh, from all the players because he's a very amicable young man. He's intelligent. And um, I'm sure that once he gets the necessary help, that we can we can do well in this com in the World Cup. And in some more cricket news, the Windward Islands Volcanoes head coach Ian Allen is hoping for a better showing as the Windwards begin their Super 50 over campaign this week. The Windwards will bowl off against Guyana in their opening match on Thursday. The Windwards did not win a single match in last year's limited overs tournament. Yeah, I think I think we we have a good chance this this um in this year's tournament. Um, and looking back at the history of of Winwood in this version of cricket, we we would have done well, you know, in the past and you know of late, you know, the way the team was performing. I think that you know was basically a high high mark, you know. In terms of our performances, um, we would have won this tournament a, a few years ago. We didn't do too well in last year's tournament. But I think looking back at, at last year's tournament, um, the years that we didn't do well, and I think we are conscious of it. And, um, at the moment, you know, we we focus on working on these areas and see how how much we can get close to, you know, being as as, as confident as possible to execute in, 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 in these areas. And on to football news where the DFA will kick off its Division 1 league this week. While the race to avoid relegation is just as hot as the race for the title, as the Maho Soka Strikers will take on KFC Harlem United in a crucial match that will have implications in the relegation battle this weekend in the Premier League. The Division 1 league on Wednesday, Police Sports Club, will take on Malta in the Harlem United at 6 p.m. While at the Buffett State playing field, it will be ACS Tarish United versus Fukule at 7 p.m. On Thursday, Point Michel will come up against Buffett Ambassadors at the Poirier playing field. While at the Buffett State playing field, it will be Ellis Stars versus Nemesis. And on Friday, Kukchis Babash of Buffett State will do battle with Trafalgar at the Buffett State playing field. While at the Dubla playing field, it will be Itasi United versus Bombers. On Saturday, Ken Rowe will take on Wind George Academy. These matches begin at 6 p.m. 
Meanwhile, in the Dominic Women's League on Wednesday, Southeast Stars will take on Wood City Strikers at 5.30 p.m. at the Buffett Pistain Field. On Saturday, Southeast Stars will again be in action. This time again, the Flint Champion New India Google Runners at the Buffett Pistain Field. And in the Lime Premier League on Saturday, defending champions, North Concrete and Steel Bombers, will take on Scotia Bank's Buffett State at the Poorie Playing Field. While at the Dubla Playing Field, it will be League Leaders, Exodus Football Club versus Sadiqo Southeast. On Sunday, Hassan United will come up against Mao Suka Strikers at the Dibla playing field. While at the Pori playing field, it will be Dibla Football Club versus Icons Football Club. All matches begin at 3 p.m. In more sporting news, the village of Mont Prosper has emerged as the overall winner of the 2014-2015 Sports Division District Sports Festival. Mont Prosper won for a total of 31 points with first place finishes in rounders and basketball and a second place finish in cricket. And in the, at the event held at Benjamin's Park on Sunday, Crayfish River Salibe followed with 27 points with wins in cricket and track and field, and a second place in football, while Point Michel came in third with wins in football and volleyball. Trophies were presented to the winners of the seven sporting disciplines. In, for cricket, it was Crayfish River Salibe, football went to Point Michel, volleyball also went to Point Michel. Basketball to Mont Prosper, Wesley took home the netball trophy and Mont Prosper rounders while Crayfish River Salibert took home track and field. The champion village will receive the award for the best sporting village of 2014 at the National Sports Awards to be held on May 6, 2015 and is also expected to receive a cash incentive from the Minister responsible for sports, Honourable Justina Charles. And back to some football news where we're heading down south as a packed week is on the cards in the Caribs and Stones Point Michel Football League. Results of matches in the Caribs and Stones Point Michel Football League played last week. On Thursday, James Limit, first home, security get a youth, made a positive start to the second round with an M with an eight two job in of Astrophone to bend with fair young goners. Nigel Sanderson registered a hat trick, the Rick Frampton getting two. Captain Peltier, Shem Deluge, and Ismael Lendon scored one each. Daniel Oman and Patrick Spears scored for Young Gunners. The league continues tonight with defending champion E.L. Pinard Boca Juniors, taking on E.L. Pinard 2 for his pattern. On Friday, Jays Limited for two security ghetto youth will come up against Alan Tusse, Shambhali Bla Veteran. And the Sunday, E.L. Pinard Ball will battle and Stephen Pelvis to play Young Gunners. All matches begin at 6 p.m. at the Police Link Field. That's all the time for sports. Your weather report is next. So welcome to tonight's weather broadcast. I am your presenter, Malaika Laron. Taking a look at earlier satellite imagery, which showed low-level clouds which moved across Dominica today, resulted in mostly cloudy skies. Radar imagery indicated shower activity across the region today. The weather is expected to be mostly cloudy and breezy with scattered showers tonight, and similar conditions are expected tomorrow. Sea conditions are expected to be moderate to rough with swells peaking near 10 feet. A small craft warning remains in effect for above normal sea swells. The weather is expected to be cloudy with scattered showers on Wednesday and Thursday, partly cloudy to cloudy with scattered showers on Friday. A decrease in wind speed is expected by Friday. For the rest of the Lesser Antilles, expect cloudy skies and breezy conditions with scattered showers. International cities forecast, overcast skies in New York, partly cloudy skies in Miami and Beijing, cloudy skies in London, and thundersome activities expected in Caracas. The sun will rise tomorrow at 6.35 a.m. and will set at 5.54 p.m. For more information, contact us at 447-5555 or visit our website at weather.gov.dm. Thanks for viewing. Have a good night.
That's news. The headlines once again. Dominica embarks on a biodiversity project which could attract $1.7 million in investment from the Global Environment Facility. And the Dominica Hotel and Tourism Association calls for greater investment in Dominica's destination marketing efforts. Send your questions and comments to news at mapping2k4.com. On behalf of the entire production team, I'm Gavin Richards. Remember, you can also download the TuneUp 767 app for instant access to the Channel 5 News. I'm Gavin Richards, thanks for watching.